Hey, what's going on everybody? Robert Arrington here with Deer Meat for Dinner. And I'm thinking about starting a series called My Hometown. My hometown is Jupiter, Florida. And right over there, that would be Jupiter Inlet Colony in front of us. We're in the, the intercoastal waterway right now. And of all the places I've ever been in the world, I think there's more to do right here in Jupiter than anywhere I've ever been. Now, we're going back to set stone crab traps in the intercoastal waterway. And we're using a new trap that a good friend of mine, Rob, from Rob's Real Baits made. And what it is, is it's like a combination blue crab, stone crab trap. You can catch either one in it, but this one's really designed for stone crabs. And I'll show you why. See, blue crabs are a swimming crab. They use the back fin to swim. Stone crabs are not swimmers. So what he did was he built this trap where it, it has no lip. That's a blue crab trap. So they can swim up here and just cruise right in here. They, he took that out. So he made it where the crab can just walk straight in. And he also made a larger bait compartment. Reason is when you're leaving a trap for stone crabs, you typically leave it for a longer duration. This trap, for blue crabs, I literally will put it in today and I'll pull it out tomorrow. With stone crabs, I'm gonna put it in today and I'll probably pull it out Thursday, leave it there for a while. Here's my float. I'm a recreational crabber. Here in Florida, I have to have a saltwater fishing license and your trap or your, your float has to be marked with an R. Throw it in the water and then you wanna pay attention. What direction is the current running? The current runs north and south here. So you want your openings to run in the same direction as your trap. So, and also you have to have your address and your name labeled. Good deal. We're gonna let that sucker soak for about three days. And then we'll be eating good stone crab. When you're out here in the ICW, the intercoastal waterway, and you're setting traps, you wanna make sure your traps are not directly in the channel, and you also wanna use your chart plotter to mark them. Otherwise, you could lose them. Anytime you're in an area and you're just checking it out, structure always holds crabs. So, that structure right there is a great place to put a trap. Now, as all that scent goes down, we're on the edge of the channel. Hopefully, Mr. Stone Crab comes by. So right here, we have a little island. That island will create disturbances in the water, whether it goes around the left or right side of it. Anytime you have disturbances in the water like that, it creates eddies and it creates an area that you might find a crab. So. There you have it. So we're out on a flat here. This area, there's no structure, no nothing. I just think there's gonna be crabs. How deep are we? 11. Perfect. Now I gotta hit save. Good. Main reason that you have to save your coordinate is because there's so many traps out here. I've never seen this many traps. So it's very important to mark your, your trap's location. Now, we'll let Jacob throw out his traps. You're allowed five per person, as long as you have a valid fishing license. Oh, perfect. Go ahead. Well, that's it, y'all. Two of us, five traps apiece, 10 traps in the water. And uh, we got real high hopes. We're using fresh bluefish for bait. Bluefish is one of the most oily, bloody, crab-loving flesh you can get. So hopefully we catch crabs. Well, we're back in the river and uh, trying to pull our traps. First trap we come to is gone. So I've 
we'll figure out what happened, but. What do we have here? I got a small stone and three blue crabs. No, four blue crabs, all females. This, that's a blue crab, and it's a female. You can tell it's a female by the big broad apron, like that. Now, if you see how brown it is on the bottom, that's called a rusty belly. That means she's been in this shell for a long time. You can also tell by all those, uh, all the barnacles on the back. Now this is a stone crab. Although it's legal to take both claws, you're not allowed to harvest anything from an egg-bearing female. Again, big broad apron, and you can see those orange spongy-like things. Those are eggs. All right, at least we had a trap. A catfish and a blue crab. Another female at that. Neither of which are keepers. Huh, we've got a spider crab, two catfish, two puffers, and a blue crab. I mean, are you kidding me? This is like, what on earth? He will bite you so bad. You see them chompers? See how he just deflated and went on down? That's a spider crab. So. Teeth. Look at these crabs. I mean, covered in barnacles. That's a legal stone crab, but I just don't believe in keeping a crab that small. Got to be bigger than that for me to keep. All right, y'all, let's see if Jacob is any luckier than me. Two little blue crabs. Stone crabbing is not going as planned. We may have to uh, change course. Is that a ladyfish? How on earth did a ladyfish get in there? One. There you go. Another stone crab, big old stone crab. Tiny claw. That's a claw that, that uh, she had regenerated from last year. Now she's starting to grow one now on that side. Does us no good. Huh, we got a stone crab. We put out 10 traps, we lost a trap, and we caught one stone crab. Isn't that wonderful? Now, as I was showing you before, that's your cutter. See how that overlaps? See how that does not overlap? That's what they use for crushing. That's what they use for cutting. It's legal to keep both claws, but by nature, by, by rule, I only keep one. And all we do is you just boop, crack it right. It'll just, just like that. He lets it go and he'll regrow it. It's gonna live just fine. And we got one claw, but guess what? I'm gonna make something really delicious out of that claw. And I'm thankful we got one, because one is better than none. So, we'll see you at the house. Welcome to the kitchen, y'all. There's our one medium-sized stone crab. And today, I expected to catch a whole bunch of crabs. I thought we were gonna go out, pull 10 traps, and catch... 30 crabs, maybe? Have 30 claws? Well, I was wrong. We got one. But instead of complaining like, well, I lost a trap and I only caught one crab, I thought that's like a perfect illustration of life. Sometimes you don't catch any crabs. Sometimes it doesn't go as you plan. 
but life turns out best for those who make the most out of how life turns out. And we've got one crab, and I'm gonna show you how to make one crab and do an amazing meal. And check this out, see this, look at this, record. Y'all are getting recorded right now. Check that out. Oh, hey, how are you doing? So I'll be using this camera and that camera in filming by myself today. Come over here, look at that. Oh my goodness, our crab going in the hot water. And we're gonna leave it there for 10 minutes. Go 10. Start. Okay, so here we go. We've got our little baby potatoes and we're gonna put some extra virgin olive oil. This stuff, we actually got it from one of our subs and it, it Larry Limerick is his name. It is amazing. So we're gonna use some Everglades cactus dust and this will give our potatoes like a wonderful um, smoky flavor and then we'll add some salt in there and then we'll do some fresh cracked pepper just toss them all in there just like that so they just become nice and then we'll throw them right in there Oh yeah! How do you like this? This is a lot of fun. All right, and now we have a piece of that deer that we killed this week. That's a part of the ham, part of the hind quarter, and we're going to trim it up. See that? See all that silver skin? We want to get some of that off of there. Cut down through it, not all the way through, and then just delay it right off the silver skin just like this. Ooh. Nice. Look how beautiful that piece of meat is right there. That's just gorgeous stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that piece of meat. That is gorgeous. There's Momar. There's Tebow. <laughs> There's Remy. Let's see if they want a piece of deer meat. Easy, easy. Hold on. She's like a piranha. Come back here, shut that off. Now that is just ice water. There is our beautiful stone crab. Throw it in the ice water. What that does is it blanches, so it stops it from cooking, cools it down. Take a little bit of salt, pepper, and a dash of Everglades season, Everglades cactus dust. Now I'm gonna make a homemade Bernays sauce. I'm gonna start off by making a white wine reduction. We'll use about that much. Okay, so then what we have, chopped chives, basil, and ginger with some fresh tarragon. Our tarragon, ginger, basil, and chives. We'll put a nice pinch in there, about like that. Do some chives, basil, ginger. Get a nice pinch of salt. Well, maybe a touch more salt. Good. Now we want it to cool. Eight ounces of just nice, pure Irish butter. The great thing about Bernays is tomorrow morning, whenever I make an omelet, it's gonna be like, holy mackerel good. Put it on the heat, take it off the heat, and we're just gonna sit here and mix it around. On the heat, off the heat. On the heat, 
off the heat. And we're gonna keep doing that. Then I'm gonna add two egg yolks. Put that in there. Now, if, if you make this too hot, it will break, it will separate. We're trying to emulsify it. Look at this, look at that. Taste it. Oh my gosh. That came out perfect. Take some garlic. Throw some garlic in there. That's Add just a little bit of salt. Reduce the heat a little bit. Let's make this party happen. Ooh, look how beautiful that is. There's your stone crab right there. Nice stone crab. Take the crab, put it on the inside of your hand, and take just a spoon, just like this, and just, just barely tap, tap, tap a -roo. Just like that. See how it cracks? See how it cracks in there? And watch this. <laughs> oh, heck, yeah. And you're left with that succulent deliciosoness. It's my new word. And she will come right apart. And that will come out. Beautiful. Alrighty, everybody, it's time to make a plate. Oh, Lord have mercy. Look at this. Beautiful. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this food. I thank you for all of our many blessings. Lord, please watch over us and guide us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, this is, uh, this is amazing. It's wonderful, and I can't wait to taste it. I really wish y'all were here to taste it. Can't get any better than that, y'all. With your stone crab, you just right off that little centerpiece. Mm. Not gonna lie, I wish I had about 10 more of those, but I'm so thankful for the one that I did. Now let's look at this deer meat. We'll just cut right down through the middle. That. Perfect medium rare inside. Coupled with that homemade Bernays. Like heaven, y'all. Mm. Well, I'm not gonna be rude and make y'all sit here and watch me eat this. I just wanna tell you, without, without too much food in my teeth, Thank you so much for making deer meat for dinner what it is. You guys are amazing. And I thank you so much for all the support and the encouragement. Y'all rock. I love you so much. And uh, until next time, we go!